So we're going to look at complex numbers now. Uh, the last two videos may have seemed a little strange because I recorded them uh, before I had this fancy technology to just record right on the screen here. I had to videotape it, so that is how to, that's the definition of I and also how to add and multiply uh, complex numbers. You don't have to worry about the factoring, that's not important uh, for us here. Uh, so we're going to look at the polar form now. <coughs> so there is a real and an imaginary part of a complex number and we are going to plot these so let me get some graph paper here about to plot some of these and when we do there's two axes it used to be x and y still horizontal and vertical uh, we're going to call the horizontal the real axis okay great real axis. The vertical axis used to be the y, it's now the imaginary axis. So I could just call it, I could just write i, but that's a little misleading. It's it's a real number line multiplied by i. So it's a imaginary number line. Now as you saw before, complex numbers have two parts, a real and an imaginary part. So what we're going to do is plot uh, z equals, let's do 3 minus i. Uh, you can think about it, so in your head you can think about it as 3 comma negative 1 as a point, but uh, we're allowed to multiply complex numbers so they're not exactly points, uh, although they graphically are going to look just like a point. So we're going to go over 3 on the real axis, now on the imaginary axis that takes care of the 3, now on the imaginary axis we're going down 1. So another way to think about this is 3 plus negative 1i. So that negative 1 is you know, obviously down. So our complex numbers plotted right there. Now conjugate was mentioned, and of course conjugate still exists. Uh, the way conjugates work Uh, we'll call it z with a bar on top, so that's a conjugate. And what this is going to be, you're going to negate the imaginary term, so it's 3 plus i. Uh, you could write out in full notation, it was 3 minus i bar, and then when you apply the bar, or the conjugate, you get 3 plus i. Now if I go back and graph this, it will be graphed, I'm going to switch colors, even though I'm going to label it z-bar, I just want to switch colors here. So that's z-bar. <coughs> so this is a perfect time to talk about polar form, because we have a graphical representation here. So we'll just go with the original complex number, z. Now instead of having a horizontal and vertical description of this point, or this number z, we're going to have distance from the origin and an angle. And we're not going to get creative here, it's just going to be theta for our angle and we're going to use r for the radius or distance from the origin. So that'll be the polar description are going to use the magnitude and the angle. And likewise I could go up here and draw for z bar now take a guess at what you think that radius is going to be. You probably guessed the same as the other radius. That is correct, so the radius doesn't change. But our angle, definitely not the same because we don't end up in the same direction, so it can't be the same angle. Uh, right here, I don't want to write theta because it's not theta, uh, but it is definitely related to theta. So basically if theta goes whatever direction, in this case, theta is going clockwise, the opposite direction is negative theta going uh, counterclockwise. So, and we're going to uh, write this out. So our polar notation there's going to be two ways to write this, and one way 
we'll go r times cos theta plus i sine theta and you could definitely distribute the r like that uh, and basically this is just cosine is the horizontal amount and sine is the vertical amount of the angle theta so if we run back to our graph just think about the angle theta there is going you know down a little bit into quadrant four and then r just represents how far to go in that direction so this is polar notation and now I'm going to talk about Euler's uh, polar notation. Now this is definitely a lot shorter to write. So I would say it has the, uh, it's definitely more efficient. And as you will see very soon, is actually more efficient, not just faster to write, but also you can operate on it a lot faster. Uh, just looking at how the original number was written, if I multiply two of those together, I'm going to have to FOIL. No problem, we can all FOIL, but it's not exactly uh, the fastest way to multiply numbers. So we're going to have, of course, the same information, but it's going to be presented as R times E, the number E you remember, uh, well, you don't have to remember very much about it. It doesn't really serve a purpose other than being a placeholder here. So you see the theta is actually hiding in the exponent, and it's i times theta, not i to the theta power. It's i times theta. You can uh, over parenthesize to ensure you're multiplying i times theta before you raise to the e power. Alright, so that's uh, Euler's notation. So let's go ahead and do a conversion here. So it's our first example. Now I have to pick this carefully or else it will uh, have an ugly angle and an ugly radius. So we're going to do square root 3 uh, minus i. So convert to uh, it's in rectangular, convert to polar. So how are we going to do this? So we go back to our nice picture. Let's think about how to do this up here. So what we're going to do, we need to know the radius, which is the distance from the origin to our point. And we already know we're given the horizontal and vertical coordinates. So all we're going to do is use Pythagorean theorem, and that'll give us uh, square them, add them together, and that'll give us radius squared. Uh, theta is going to be a little more tricky, and we'll worry about that in a minute. So we're going to have some formulas here. So we're going to use these to convert. Uh, so we're going to go with z is a plus ib. Uh, also r e to the i theta. So we're going to see how to go back and forth to each of these. So our radius, remember you're just going to square horizontal vertical coordinates. So that's a squared plus b squared. You really do not want to put the i in here and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, now this of course will be r squared so we have to take the square root. So there's our uh, Pythagorean relationship right there. So what you will not do, uh, it will always come out wrong. If you accidentally, just think about if I go a squared plus i b squared, what I will get, of course it's a squared plus i squared b squared, and what is i squared? i squared is negative one. So if you accidentally leave i in there, you're going to get a squared minus b squared, which is definitely not going to be the same as a squared plus b squared. So do not leave the i. So 
so do not include i. All right, that gives me the radius. Now, how are we going to deal with the angle? Well, we just saw in polar points how to do that. It's no different here. So one way to write it. Tangent is how we relate opposite and adjacent. So tangent's opposite, which in this case would be vertical over adjacent, uh, which is nicely already uh, A. So we got B over A is tangent theta. Now there are two other trig functions we can use. And let's think about sine theta here. So sine theta, now sine's a little tricky. It's probably good to include a nice triangle here. So let's go ahead and do that. Vertical side B, horizontal A, R. Here we go, theta. So that's, that's the triangle everything here is based on. So you see the tangent. Uh, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent right there. And we're going to move to sine. So sine is, again, opposite over hypotenuse, or radius in this case, B over R. Now in your textbook, you're going to see R moved on the other side. So it's going to look like R sine theta equals B. So we will uh, just go ahead and use this R sine theta equals B version. And so I'll take that out, reduce any confusion. And we do the same thing with cosine. Except cosine, you just replace the uh, opposite with the adjacent. So these are our formulas to convert. So let's get right back to that example. Now that we have uh, the ability to convert it. So we want to go to polar. So I need two pieces. I need an R and I need a theta. R is always easier to get, or at least it's easier for me to get the radius off of these. So R is square root, A squared plus B squared equals square root. R A, square root 3 squared. Now, it looks like there's no B, but of course we know there's really a negative 1 hiding in front of the I. So you can absolutely include the negative. Make sure you're actually squaring negative 1. If that negative sign lands outside, you didn't square negative one. Something uh, you have to be very careful what you're squaring. So we square negative one, two becomes positive one, and square root squared, that's just three. So we got square root three plus one, square root four, which is two. That's our radius. Now we're ready for the angle theta, tan theta is b over a, which, let's see that negative 1 over square root 3. Hopefully that's, let's be, yep, all right. <coughs> so if you are not super familiar with all the tangents, uh, the, the tangent values, you do need to know the sine of cosine values for sure. I do know a sine or cosine value that does include a square root 3, and it includes it as square root 3 over 2. Now, of course, this is not equal if I just leave it like this. So if I divide the denominator by 2, I divide the numerator by 2. Uh, there we go. Now, hopefully, we can figure out what angle this is from here. Uh, if not, you can, let's see, draw your little unit circle. So the way I like to think about this, we're actually down here in quadrant four, are, let's see, three, square root three. So where exactly is square root three? Uh, it's bigger than one, and it's less than four. So just looking, square root three, between uh, which of course is 1 and 2. So exactly how far between? Um, I don't know. More than... doesn't really matter. That'll be 1. You know what? Let's not worry about the circle right now. So that's 2. So we'll say it's right about there. That'll be square root 3. 
and then we're going to go down one. All right, there is where the point will be. Draw right down here. Now, if you have a calculator, you can just do tangent inverse, and that can be your answer. Uh, theta is tangent inverse. Uh, I'm just going to stick with the negative 1 over square root of 3. Uh, now, as to what that is, those are values we're familiar with. We just have to figure out what angle this is. Now, I went over more than I went down, so this is going to be the first angle I know about, negative pi over 6. There are two other angles that could have been down here, two other common angles. If you're here at uh, pi over 4, you know your horizontal and vertical will match up. Uh, they'll be the same. And if you're down here at negative pi over 3, you know that your horizontal is bigger than your vertical component. So that's how you can tell, um, if, if you're on familiar sides, which of those three angles you have. So there we go, negative pi over 6. Uh, you do have to be careful if you're going to use tangent inverse, because tangent inverse, the range is uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if you end up with an angle anywhere over in quadrant 2 or 3, you're going to have to add a pi to your theta. So just be a little careful if you go with tangent inverse. The exact same problem happened in uh, when we turned points from uh, Cartesian into polars. So we're going to do one more example of conversion. We're going to convert the opposite direction, which actually is a whole lot easier. Uh, let's go... Oops. Four e to the i, negative 3 pi over 4. All right, convert to rectangular. So <coughs> we have r cos theta equals x, r sine theta equals y. That was just like a 4. And we have our radius is 4. Theta, negative 3, pi over 4. So we got 4 cos, negative 3, pi over 4 equals x. Uh, let's see, cos, that will be... So we're in quadrant 3. So everybody's negative there. So that's negative 1 over square root 2. Is x. Uh, I'm okay with this number the way it is. You can rationalize out of there if you want to, but it's good enough for me. Now I can do the exact same thing for sine. For sine negative 3 pi over 4 equals y. It's the exact same uh, value for cosine and sine at the 3 pi over 4, which is exactly halfway, in, it's right in the middle of quadrant 3. So it's, you know, the same distance to either place, so that means your x, y coordinates are going to be the same. So we got 4 negative uh, 1 over square root 2 is y. Uh, <coughs> you could also, uh, if you realize exactly where that angle is, you know your x coordinate is going to be the same as your y coordinate. Uh, and you can actually skip that step. Alright, so that's it for conversions, and we're going to get into more uh, multiplying in polar form.